Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kat and today I am doing a recommendation video for women in translation from South Korea and China. So for Women in Translation Month, which is August, um, I've decided to do a few recommendations videos just of areas around the world where I have read quite a few women in translation that I really, really like. So um, upcoming, I have today is Korea and China, then Europe, then Japan, because I just, I read a lot of Japanese, so that has to be its own video. Um, and then I think Latinx or Argentinian women, depending on how some reading goes, uh, because I'm only going to tell you about women in translation that I really, really loved. Um, I do read a lot of translations, but not all of them are um, worth bringing to your attention. So, uh, this video has two parts. First are women in translation that are on my radar, and I want your opinion. Like, have you read these books? Are they good? Please tell me. And the second part is my own personal recommendations to you about women that you absolutely should be reading. So, um, the first part, let's get into. So, there are two books that I have my eye on, and they are both from Korea. The first one I've talked about before, it's Cursed Bunny by Bora Chung. So, this is a short stories collection um, involving magical realism, horror, and science fiction that takes on capitalism and the patriarchy. And that sounds great, plus the cover is great. And yeah, I'm just really intrigued. I know that some people have already read this collection and really, really gelled with it. Books and Bao highly recommends it. Um, and I'm just really excited to pick it up sometime later this year. And the other one that really has my attention is Bluebeard's First Wife, which I'm just realizing as I look at the covers. Um, I think I'm drawn in by the cover porn because I love a good neon. Um, and this is, again, a short stories collection involving disasters, accidents, and death. Um, and it's shelved as fiction and horror. Um, so again, short stories, very dark, macabre. I'm really here for it. So if you've read either of those, Cursed Bunny or Bluebeard's First Wife, please let me know what your thoughts were down below. Because, um, yeah, those are at the very tippy top of my... Uh, Korean women in translation I want to read. So without further ado, I'm going to talk about five women in translation that you should really be reading. Like I was very impressed and we're going to start from, I guess, my least most favorite to my most most favorite. Um, so we're going to start off with Xin Ron, who is a Chinese writer. Um, and I recently read Sky Burial by Xin Ron and was completely blown away. So we are following Zin Ron, who runs into this woman in a tea shop, and the woman is relaying her life um, traveling through Tibet to find out what happened to her husband, who was MIA and then killed in war. And you're finding out a lot about uh, the Tibetan nomadic lifestyle, life on the plains, and also the socio-economic and like political system at that time under Mao in China, and then um, the people who wanted nothing to do with that but were pulled into it um, from Tibet. And I just thought it was so well done. Um, I couldn't put it down, and I really recommend it. I gave it four stars. Um, I also have The Good Women of China on my TBR from this author. I think Zin Ron was a podcast or radio host, and women would call in with their stories, and it's a collection of the most vivid, most horrifying, and most like devastating stories Zin Ron has ever heard during that time. Um, so I'm really intrigued to get to, get to that one. Um, all right, my number four is Won Pyeon Sun, uh, who is a South Korean writer. And this is Almond. So this is dark, it's not gonna be for everyone. Um, so this is following a young boy who has alexithmia. Um, so he can't feel emotions like fear or anger. So he's really struggling to get on with others. But luckily his close family members um, kind of know how to deal with him and how to make him part of the family. Yet when there's a tragedy, he loses 
that safety net and he's plunged into the world of like strangers and classmates. Um, and that's where he meets another young boy who decides to befriend him um, and things go from there. Um, this is very dark, but I gave it like a four plus. Like I couldn't look away even though I knew like things who weren't going to necessarily go that well. Um, so I think this is an author definitely to check out if you like character driven stories that explore the darker sides of uh, mental illness and also like being ostracized from society. Um, and I will definitely be looking out for any books this author has in the future. Um, okay, my number three pick is Cho Nam Ju, who is a South Korean writer, um, and she recently came out with Kim Ji Young, born 1982, which I gave four plus stars as well. So this one is following the daily everyday life of Kim Ji Young, who was born in 1982, as the title suggests. And what is so shocking about the book is that it's not trying to be shocking. It's just trying to relay what a woman's life in Korea is like. Um, and I lived in Korea for two years and some of the stuff in here was actually a little triggering to me because it was things that in Korean society they're not necessarily like talked about or seen, but from a Western perspective I would be like, why is it fine for the principal to make like sexual jokes to me? Like, why is it fine for like these, my neighbors to report me to my school for my behavior, which was walking my dogs too much and having my boyfriend over before we were married. Like, so that's the kind of, I kept having like this weird double feeling when I was reading the book, being so angry for Kim Ji Young, but also being like, yeah, this book is 100% true to <laughs> like the society that's currently going on there. And I think a huge part of why this book resonated so much with me was because a lot of times people who vacation in a place or consume I want to say like the propaganda media because like let's just be real here uh k-pop and all the stuff about the k-idols is all a form of cultural propaganda or cultural messaging that korea wants to send out a certain message about society but while that may be true that's just like soul and that's not the whole picture so i lived in like a very country town with very old-fashioned views and just so many things about the book really, really got under my skin and have stuck with me. Um, so I highly recommend this if you're looking for um, like a modern view of the life of a woman or like the patriarchy or the side of the culture of South Korea that perhaps isn't what is put out there for consumption around the world. And I will also definitely be looking out for more books from the author in the future. All right, my number two pick of women you should be reading um, is Yange. So I recently read, oh, who is a Chinese author, sorry. So this is Strange Beast of China, and it's just so, so like atmospheric and dreamy, but like really melancholy, um, and you can take it at its word or you can read so much like metaphor and simile into this story and you could even argue it's a collection of short stories. So this is following a woman in a fictional Chinese town where strange beasts live alongside humans and she used to be a cryptozoologist of strange beasts but she has since transitioned to being like a journalist and she is called to investigate the different types of strange beasts learn more about them and write about them for like the paper and for journals. Um, and that's kind of how the story is segmented. But her own family tree and like friendship group and bonds she has with certain people also connect with different types of strange beasts throughout the narrative, as well as every single strange beast chapter could be read on its own 
and every single strange beast is just such like an imaginative feat and just wildly interesting so like i could not stop reading this i thought it was absolutely brilliant um and then there's also a lot of metaphor in here as well um that the strange beasts are representative of invisible people such as the poor people or homeless people or displaced people or minority groups in China which are being largely ignored by the government. Um, there's also a lot to be said about abandoned project works and economic collapse in areas of China um, and how that is impacting people and driving them to acts which might be beast-like. Um, there's just a lot, a lot to love in here and unpack in here. So if that sounds at all up your alley, I highly recommend this. I ended up giving it four and a half stars. This was like a grower on me. It was at first like a four plus, but I couldn't stop thinking about it for so long. So this is four and a half stars. And I also have on my TBR, the Chili Bean Paste Clan, also by Yan Gay. Um, this is a family drama book which I don't normally read. We all know this, it's like not my favorite, but I'm so curious how this author with such a brilliant imagination and like really excellent character work would take on a weekend with a family where like the tensions are really high. Um, so I'm intrigued because of the author um, and I will be getting to this one if I see it like in the library. So last up is my favorite woman in translation from Korea and China, um, and this is Han Kang, who is a Korean writer, South Korean writer. And I'm very torn because on the one hand, she wrote my favorite book, and on the other hand, she wrote a book which I didn't really like that much at all, or felt lukewarm about. So Hong Kong wrote Human Acts, which is not her most famous book, but Human Acts is about a student uprising that happened in Korea and was subsequently brutally, brutally squashed by the military in Korea. They just massacred their own people and corpses were building in the streets. This is a very harrowing book. It's super dark. Um, every chapter is told from a different point of view. For instance, the mother of a missing child, the a schoolboy who is tasked with lining up the corpses and helping family find them. One of the chapters is from the point of view of a rotting corpse in a field. It is so, so brutalist and so dark, but I think it's like super important. Like I never learned about that in school. I never even learned about it when I lived in Korea. No one talks about it. And I just thought that the book was so powerful. I cried multiple times reading it and I was absolutely devastated and shocked like by the end of the book that I made my husband read it. I was like, we gotta read it and we gotta talk about it. Um, so that one I gave four and a half stars and I thought it was excellent. Um, however, The Vegetarian, which is perhaps Hong Kong's most famous book, I only gave three stars and I felt pretty lukewarm. So it's about a woman who doesn't really have agency and she decides that she is going to stop eating meat, much to like the bizarre wonderment of her family and friends. Um, and it's, I think, the husband's perspective, the sister's perspective, and then I forget what the last perspective is, but I just really didn't get on with it. I didn't think that the chapters linked well. Um, I didn't think that the points of views were strong enough and it, it just wasn't my favorite. So I felt very lukewarm about the most popular book. And then the one that's not really popular, Human Acts, I thought was amazing. So uh, definitely check out Hong Kong either way, I guess. Like vegetarian is super like surreal and then Human Acts is super realistic and brutal. So yeah, very like multi-dimensional author. Um, yeah, so that finishes up the women from China and Korea that I have read and loved and that I really wanted to recommend to you. Please, 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 please let me know women in translation from Korea and China that you highly recommend. Um, because like I said, I've read more than I just talked about, but those are just the ones that I love the most. So um, I will be doing a few more videos of recommendations like this in the future, um, but I think the next video that I shall see you in 
is going to probably be my August wrap up part one and it is a doozy. So I will see you then. Lots of love and bye for now. Bye.